In this video, we're going to look at the most common stereo miking techniques with demonstrations for each. So if you're confused about coincident pairs, near coincident pairs, Blumline, Midside, Decatree and ORTF, then stay tuned. For the demonstration, we've asked Professor Leslie D. Fuck out of it from the Essex Institute of Shit Organ Players to play the first turnaround from his book, Beginner Chords for Wannabe Jazz Wankers, on a Hammond organ. So you'll be truly sick of it by the end of the video, but thanks for joining us, Professor. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, the book is available as a digital product uh, for download. <laughs> and our link is in the description below. No, it isn't. Anyway, we'll be recording the sound coming from both the organ itself with its built-in spring reverb on the left and the dry signal from the Leslie speaker spaced several feet away on the right. So you can better judge the difference in stereo information from the different techniques. Microphones will be panned hard left and hard right for the stereo examples. So make sure you're listening on a decent pair of speakers or headphones and have a pair of headphones to hand for the end of the video if you are using speakers. First up is the spaced pair or AB pair. This is a technique whereby two identical microphones, in this case the small diaphragm cardioid Louis LCT140 Air, are spaced some distance apart from both themselves and the source and can either be positioned parallel to one another or angled in towards the source to pick up more or less room sound. One advantage of the spaced pair is that it can give the widest and most dramatic stereo effect of all the techniques we'll discuss, but the disadvantage is that that can also result in a hole in the center of the image if the mics are spaced too far apart and mono compatibility can be problematic due to sounds arriving at the microphone's capsules at different times, causing comb filtering and other phase issues. These can be mitigated by using the 3 to 1 ratio rule, the 3 being the distance the microphones are spaced from one another, and the 1 the distance from the source. This of course isn't practical for scenarios like this one where the source is quite widely spread, but would work well if we were close miking the Leslie alone and can work very well for piano, drum overheads and acoustic guitars. <laughs> Next up are a couple of techniques using a coincident pair of microphones. Coincident simply means occurring together in space or time. So a coincident pair means that we have the microphone capsules placed as near to each other as we can. The simplest of these techniques is the XY configuration. This is where we have the capsules of the two microphones placed as closely as possible to one another, either next to or above, and positioned at an angle, somewhere between 90 and 130 degrees often works best. The microphone on the left is then picking up sound coming from the right and vice versa. This results in very good phase coherence due to the capsules being next to each other with the only differences being in frequency balance. Cardioid microphones are typically used in this configuration and we'll be using the Vanguard V44S with both capsules in cardioid mode for this example. Next up is the Blumline Pair. This was developed by the inventor of stereophonic sound, British engineer Alan Blumline, and uses the same coincident configuration as XY, but with the microphone set to a figure of eight pattern. If you can hear banging, it's because the cat's running around somewhere. This was originally intended for use with ribbon microphones back in the 30s, ribbon mics having a natural figure of eight polar pattern and specific microphones were developed for this technique, notably the Royer models of the time. This technique is great for picking up more room sound and ambience in your recordings and is often practiced with the microphones placed off center or directed more towards the back of the room for a more spacious effect. The technique has realistic, wide and yet focused sound. Thank you. 
Next up is the mid side or MS technique. This uses a single figure of eight microphone to pick up the sides or stereo signal and a single cardioid microphone to pick up the mid or mono signal. Typically a small diaphragm condenser is used for the mid signal set at 90 degrees atop the side mic. In this example, we're using the Lewitt LCT-140 Air as our mid microphone and the LCT-1040 set to its figure of eight pattern for the sides. But there's more to the side signal than just recording it. We need to set up a mid side matrix in order for this technique to work. This involves duplicating the side signal, that coming out of the figure of eight microphone, and inverting its polarity. Back in the analog days, we split the signal and then reverse the polarity by using a specially wired cable or using the polarity flip switch on one input of the console. But in modern times, it's far easier to set up the matrix in any DAW. Simply record the side signal from the side's microphone as it comes out of it and then duplicate the channel. Also duplicate the audio file, making sure it's precisely aligned with the original file and then reverse the polarity of the duplicated signal in the door. We then need to pan the original and out of phase duplication from the sides microphone, hard left and hard right. And we can then blend the mono or direct signal from the mid microphone with the stereo signal from the sides. This technique has the best mono compatibility of all, as when the signals are played in mono, the left and right from the sides cancel out completely, leaving just the signal from the mid microphone. But this also means that care needs to be taken to not just use the side signal, and it can sometimes sound a bit odd if the side signal is pushed up too far. So the best approach is to capture the sound you want using mainly the mid microphone, and then use the side signal to augment it and add that stereo feeling. Next, we move on to near coincident techniques such as ORTF and NOS. ORTF was developed by the Office of Radio and Television of France, with NOS being its Dutch counterpart. Both are basically the same technique, but with different spacings involved. With this method, the backs of the microphones are the ends that are closely spaced, with the capsules spaced further apart than with an XY configuration. In the case of ORTF, the capsule should be angled out at 110 degrees and spaced at 17 centimeters or 6.7 inches, closely resembling the spacing of the average human pair of ears. And for the NOS method, the microphones are angled out at 90 degrees with the capsule spaced at 30 centimeters or 12 inches. Both ORTF and NOS tend to sound better when positioned closer to the source, and the NOS spacing is our preferred method for miking an acoustic piano. Here's the ORTF configuration in action with the Lewitt LCT140 Air. Other methods worthy of note are the Decca tree, which was devised and assembled for the first time in 1954 by recording engineers working for Decca, Roy Wallace and Arthur Haddy. And this is mainly used in orchestral recording and consists of three omnidirectional microphones that are arranged in a T-shaped pattern forming an isosceles triangle. And they're usually positioned around three meters above the conductor's podium. 
This can be augmented with a further two microphones, each three meters further out from the tree and is often used in conjunction with spot microphones. As this is a specialist technique and we haven't got three matched omnidirectional microphones or a room big enough to appropriate them, we'll move on and look at the final popular method for stereo recording, binaural recording with the dummy head. The dummy head, here's Mr. Blokey, can capture stunningly faithful recordings and is commonly used for binaural recordings to be played back on headphones. This can yield mind-blowing three-dimensionality, particularly apparent with sounds coming from behind, but dummy heads are expensive with the Neumann KU100 coming in at just shy of £7,000 in the UK, but we built our own. Mr. Blokey, and we love it, and it can be built with a very limited DIY ability for as little as 76 quid. To find out how we did that, and to witness Jamie freaking out when we tested it, make sure you watch the video that's coming up on your screen right now. Isn't that right, Mr. Blokey? <laughs> 